So hi, I'm Molly Brown, a North Seattle Transfer Advisor. This is the Art Transfer Fair, and we are starting with Central Washington University. Hello, greetings. Uh, welcome to Central Washington University. Um, we are an affordable state institution uh, right in the middle of the state. Um, uh, we are just 90 miles from Seattle, uh, just over the mountains on the dry side. If you've never been here, come visit. It's a great place. Uh, my name is Greg Schlanger, and I am the chair of the Department of Art at Central Washington University. Um, we offer several uh, degrees at Central, uh, a BA in art, BA in uh, visual art teaching, so that's art education, uh, two BFAs, one in studio art, one in graphic design, and we have a very small exclusive uh, terminal degree MFA program. Uh, we also offer a couple of minors. Uh, our studio areas, ceramics, drawing, graphic design, jewelry and metal smithing, painting, photography, sculpture and wood design. So, so quite a, we share quite a few uh, studios with um, North Central. So that's uh, a lot of those credits will transfer right over. Um, the BFA is the professional degree uh, and the BA is a liberal arts degree. So it's really what's right for each student. Um, uh, Ninety percent plus of our graphic design students uh, are employed right out of school. So our BFA and graphic design program is super strong and super great. And you can see a lot of this information on our website. Uh, we also have an Instagram. There's our Instagram, CW Art Design. Uh, last year with the pandemic, we tried to move a lot of featuring our senior or graduating students uh, online. And so I've got, you know, some, a few different, you know, options to show you of some of the students that just uh, finished last spring that, uh, and how they were featured on our Instagram page. Uh, but uh, it represents a lot of what they do. And you can see a lot more of this, of course, uh, if you visit our site. Sarah, sculpture. I didn't been telling you all these things that they're doing here. Kenan, jewelry and sculpture. Christian, drawing and painting. Randall Hall is where we're located on the campus at Central. Uh, it's a, a dedicated uh, building for art and design. Uh, the first floor is mostly our three-dimensional areas. We are very strong in the crafts and uh, we've got sculpture, uh, ceramics, jewelry, metal smithing, and wood design. Uh, I believe the only wood design program in the States or in the Northwest. Um, Matthew, uh, illustration and graphic design. Marissa was uh, in painting. Uh, Roberto and William, both uh, graphic design. The Sarah Spurgeon Gallery is on the main floor of Randall Hall. Uh, it offers the opportunity for you know the campus community and the and the Ellensburg community to to see quite a bit of art. We we have national to international exhibits, um, and you know trying to enhance uh, what is happening in the classroom. So it's anywhere from the visual arts to graphic design in the Sarah Spurgeon Gallery. Big beautiful space. Um, Another one of our seniors from last year, Megan, graphic design. Trinidad. Many of our studio majors are actually in MFA programs um, across the country. Trinidad just started a program in Florida. We also have the uh, gallery 231. This is our student gallery on the second floor of Randall Hall. So this is where we house uh, feature all of the uh, BFA senior exhibitions. Christine, painting and drawing. I'm not really very good with time. So uh, <laughs> that was my timer. Is that uh, your timer? All right. So um, anyways, just, uh, uh, you know, our faculty, like at North, North Central also, they're, they're professionals. They're all doing what they want to do. Uh, scholarships are due February 22nd portfolios, 
talk to me about it. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm realizing I'm not doing it absolutely alphabetically. We're going to go to California um, College of Arts next. Hi, everybody. I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> One okay, <laughs> my name is Carrie Dillon. I'm the Assistant Director of Transfer Admissions at California College of the Arts in San Francisco, California. Um, we've been an art and design college since uh, 1907. We are one of the ACAD art and design colleges. We are also a nonprofit uh, private college. Um, and we have two campuses located in San Francisco in the design district and Oakland in a very residential area. Um, when you apply to us, you're applying to the college, not to a certain campus. We do have free transportation that we can take students back and forth in between campuses if you have you know, classes on different campuses. Um, as far as our programs go, we do offer 22 undergraduate programs under the realm of fine art, design, writing and literature, and architecture. Um, there is a lot here. Uh, the great thing is we are a very interdisciplinary college, which means even if you do decide on one program, you can take classes in other programs as well. Um, in fact, we encourage that. Um, we are launching a brand new program, Game Arts in the fall, which is great because um, it was part of our animation program and it kind of uh, got larger and larger. So we uh, actually got the accreditation to make it into a Bachelor of Fine Art in Game Arts. Um, beyond that, we do offer five undergraduate minors that align with the core values of the college. Um, and then as far as life at CCA, um, you know, we are in the San Francisco Bay Area, known for activism, culture. Um, we have over 250 uh, art venues, including now the largest modern art museum in the country, the SF MoMA. It's even larger than New York now. So we're really excited about that. Um, but we are a smaller college. So we have about 1400 undergraduate students um, and about 500 graduate students. Um, so we do offer an eight to one student faculty ratio. So you are getting very individualized attention in your class time. We're also regarded as the number one best value art school because of your return on your investment. We have a very high rate of students getting jobs right out of college. Um, we have a lot of studios and maker spaces. We're one of the last colleges in the U.S. to have a working foundry, glass blowing studios. We have exhibition spaces um, and artist lecture series. We also have housing for 100% of our students. So if you are moving from Washington and you do need some campus housing, we do have that for you, including specific housing for transfer students. So you will be living with other transfer students and graduate students, so you won't you know, be with students coming right out of high school. Um, and these, this is one block away from campus. Um, we also have a full dining facility and meal plan. As far as getting a job right out of college and uh, internships during college, we do have a great career development team. We also host a career expo every year where about 100 companies come to our San Francisco campus. Um, and that's when our students go around with their projects and portfolios to get internships or jobs. Um, we also host a fine arts career fair and social impact career fair. So there are a lot of opportunities that we kind of show you. Um, so about 83 to 85% are employed within 12 months. For architecture and interior design, it's been 100% job placement after college uh, the past four years. So it's uh, there is a shortage of architects in the Bay Area. So it's a good you know, uh, line of work to get into. As far as transfer credit is concerned, uh, we do not have any transfer requirements. You can transfer in at any point in your college career. Um, we do say, you know, uh, these recommended courses are best to take um, before transferring, just so you can transfer definitely out of the first year program. All of our students do have a foundation year uh, where they take drawing one, 2D, 3D, and 4D design courses. Um, but any 12 studio units will transfer you out of that first year program. So um, if you're more of a photographer, you can take definitely four different photography classes and still transfer out. Um, also, we recommend taking English, two art histories, and an intro to philosophy or intro to ethics. Any advanced placement is up to the faculty to review your portfolio and your transcripts and possibly even have a meeting with you to talk about that. 
Um, these are our very admissions requirements. Um, you know, these are pretty standard across the board. Uh, we do have a transfer application on our website. Um, we do um, require a 15 to 20 piece portfolio of your best creative work. That can be any style or any medium. But if you do have a lot of transfer credit in the major that you're applying for, we do recommend putting a lot of the work you did in those studio classes into your portfolio. So how do you afford a private art college? <laughs> um, so the great thing is we're really generous with scholarships. So when you apply to us, we automatically consider you for a merit scholarship up to $22,000 per year. Um, and then we also, while we're reviewing your application, review it for a diversity scholarship, which is full tuition and fees to CCA. Um, and then based on your FAFSA, we can award uh, need-based scholarships, uh, gifted aid from CCA, that could be up to 50% of your tuition. Um, and so there's a lot of different options there. Um, and I always recommend no matter what college you're applying to, if you're like, oh, I got this great package, but if only I got $5,000 more, I could afford it, definitely let your admissions counselor know because a lot of colleges have an appeals process and petitioning for additional funding. Um, and I'm happy to help you with that. So these are what I call soft deadlines because we do offer rolling admission. Um, for fall 2021, the deadline is March 1st. Um, so if you wanna be eligible for all those scholarships I just mentioned, it's great to get all your requirements in by March 1st. Um, but beyond that, it's rolling admission and we still do award merit. Um, if you wanted to scan this with your phone or uh, follow this link, you can sign up for a mailing list. Um, and I also put a bunch of information on that spreadsheet. Um, and then if you wanted to contact me, my email is transfer at cca.edu. And I'm really happy to talk to all of you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Carrie. Um, and Carrie referred to a spreadsheet. So for students and faculty who are here, I asked all the reps to put some basic contact info on a Google Doc that I will be dropping in the chat um, very soon so that you can easily connect with any of the institutions who are here today. And next we go to Cornish. Hey everybody, I am Sharon Starling. I'm the Director of Admission at Cornish College of the Arts. And I am working on starting my spreadsheet here. Okay, and then I also have my colleague, Lena Whittle, who's one of our visual art admission counselors, and she will be in the breakout room with me afterwards, and we'll be able to look at portfolios and answer additional questions. So Cornish College of the Arts is a, it, we're right here. We're in Seattle, Washington, in the South Lake Union neighborhood, um, and just down the road from you. And it is an interesting college, especially for the state of Washington, because we are really the only standalone college devoted to the visual and the performing arts. So even if you come in as an art major, you have access and interesting conversations with actors and dancers and composers and musicians. I always like to start with the mission because that really drives almost everything we do at Cornish. And the mission of Cornish College of the Arts is to provide students aspiring to become practicing artists with an education of the highest possible quality in an environment that nurtures creativity and intellectual curiosity while preparing them to contribute to society as artists, citizens, and innovators. And we do this by offering baccalaureate degrees in both the visual and the performing arts. Um, the BFA is the primary degree that we offer in addition to a Bachelor of Music and some new BA degrees that I would like to reference. Um, first, I'll call your attention to under the BFA, the highlights in yellow are actually new, newly accredited degree pathways. These are things that we have taught for a really long time at Cornish, especially in animation and illustration and UX design, but they are now their own standalone degrees. Um, in addition to a fine art department, um, interior architecture, film, and then on our performing side, dance, technical theater, musical theater, acting, and original works. Also of particular interest to transfer students is a new BA pathway. These BA degrees are major specific and with your DTA, your Associate of Arts Direct Transfer degree from North or Central or wherever in the state of Washington, we can help you finish a degree in just two years. Whereas with the BFA, sometimes if you're not coming out of one of the Associate of Fine Arts degrees, it can take um, three to four years to still complete. And just a quick visual, some people have been referencing BFA versus BA. 
And I just like to show the visual, you know, the BA is like half general ed, half studio credits. The BFA, especially if you do it right from the beginning, is a deep, deep dive into your making and your artistic practice. Um, and it's about 75% studio credits and the liberal arts classes are spread out through the four years. Cornish is 100 years old and we actually predate every artistic organization in the state, in the city of Seattle. Um, and really the only organization that was ahead of Seattle 100 years plus ago was the symphony. And Cornish, founded by a woman, her name was Nellie Cornish. She was a professional musician and she desired to have an institute where all of the arts could come together, where people could try new and innovative ideas, try them out, perform them, exhibit them, and to learn from faculty that were working professionals in their field. And so back in the day, people like Merce Cunningham, John Cage, Mark Toby, uh, William Ivey, Imogene Cunningham, Robert Joffrey, all had early days in their careers at Cornish, either teaching or being a student. It is a program that combines the traditional techniques, but also is very excited about the interdisciplinary between the visual and the performing and the experimental and the new work that we can produce. Our goal is to help students build critical thinking skills, creative problem solving skills, to collaborate and to generate new work. That's probably the thing that we are most well known for. I mean, that's kind of obvious for the visual arts, but I think especially on the performing arts side, where we are really known is for the, the generation, the creation, composition, choreography, new plays. It's our goal to help you build a sustainable future in the arts. We do this by having faculty who are all working professional artists. We have visiting master artists coming to campus every week. The classes are small. We have about 600 students on campus with a seven to one student faculty ratio. And that mentorship with your faculty is a lifelong mentorship. It's, it's not for two, three or four years. It is a relationship that will carry you through the rest of your artistic life. Seattle is an amazing city to be a young emerging artist. Some of you may already know that because you're here. And when we get out of COVID and we can go places and do things, we will be back to exhibitions, performances, internships, etc. We have 12 buildings in the South Lake Union neighborhood, including in the upper right, you'll see the 20 story residence hall that we have built. Um, double occupancy, you get a roommate and a bathroom in each room and um, amenities like art making space, practice rooms, uh, movement studios, and then a outdoor deck on the 20th floor. A couple more picture creative spaces, galleries. Uh, we have three new spaces opening in 2022. So COVID came at a really good time for us because we were planning some construction anyway. So now the 3D fabrication studio is undergoing a multi-million dollar renovation. And we're building, we are not building, somebody else is building for us a 40 story apartment building right in our in the middle of our campus. But we have the main floor, which will be a new gallery space and a state of the art. Um, performance space. More of our spaces. This is some of the Cornish Commons. Quick on the application requirements. Application, we are new on the Common app as well. So if you're starting some applications and you want to make it a little easier, you can do that. College transcripts. Um, we will ask for the high school transcript or GED if you don't have up to 30 transfer credits. Personal statement, letter of rec. We've always been test optional, so don't worry about the SAT or ACT. And then we do require a portfolio of about 12 to 20 pieces, and these are all virtual and online this year. Quick on the dates, uh, February 15th is kind of our priority deadline, but again, for transfers especially, we're on rolling admission and we'll take applications after that. And then just finally, um, a little bit, we've some people have mentioned money already. College is expensive. Transferring out of community college may give you some sticker shock. Uh, one of the things that Cornish did when our new president arrived a few years ago is in, by 2019, we had committed to lowering tuition 20%. We're the only art school in the nation to do that. And certainly learn more at cornish.edu. And my contact information is on the spreadsheet. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and let's go to DigiPen. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Katie Clark. I work in the Office of Outreach at DigiPen. I'm a Senior Outreach Coordinator. 
Um, if you haven't heard of us before, uh, here's a summary of kind of an overview of what we have to offer. We're located in Redmond, Washington. Um, so not too far from you all living in Seattle, just across the water. It's a short bus ride or hop across 520. It's a really great location for students who want to work in the game development industry, which is what our primary focus is on. We were the first university in the world to offer a bachelor's degree in video game programming specifically um, and teach uh, on all areas that are required to create a fully functioning video game. So that includes computer science, of course, and then digital art and animation, game design and development, as well as music and sound design. Our students from all of those different areas of expertise come together and work on full-scale games and animations as part of their curriculum, which is a huge part of uh, how our students find success, why they choose to come to DigiPen, um, and why they, why they do what they do. So a little bit about our student body. Um, we have about 1,200 students total, including our undergraduate programs, as well as our graduate programs. About half of those are from Washington State, 30% from out of state, and then 15% of our students are international as well. Um, students have come to DigiPen from over 59 countries around the world. Um, so we have a fairly diverse population, um, even considering our small size. This is an overview of the um, degree programs that we offer here at DigiPen. Um, so I mentioned the four categories earlier, um, but this is where those uh, kind of fall in. Um, our computer science degrees train students to become expert programmers in re relation to game design um, and game creation. Of course, we have our game design and development degrees. There's a couple of different facets of game design. So if you're interested in learning more about what game design is and how you can apply your studies um, to being a game developer in the future, definitely join us in the breakout room and we can talk more about the differences between the degree programs because um, that can be one of the trickiest parts of our programs to uh, get a grasp on. We have our digital art and animation degree as well, with, which trains students to create art for film, as well as uh, game art production. Uh, we teach traditional art, 2D animation, as well as 3D animation and 3D modeling in our Bachelor of Fine Arts program. And then our music and audio degrees, if there are any performing artists in the room. Um, we do have music and sound design programs, one that's a computer science space and one that is a um, more of a performing arts space. I do have some more information specifically about um, our art programs, since I know that's what most of you are here to learn more about. Um, our art and animation degree, this is uh, an overview of the different types of topics that are covered. Um, but in year one, we really start you off with a firm foundation in traditional art. So we're gonna focus on drawing, sketching, painting, sculpting, and building a firm foundation. And then building on top of that foundation, starting in your sophomore year, um, to train you to, uh, to become an expert in 2D animation, 3D animation, 3D modeling. Um, starting in your junior year, you actually start meeting with the program director for this program um, on a, a weekly basis to discuss your, your path, your desires, what you're interested in um, pursuing and uh, helping you select within your game projects, your animation projects, what type of specializations you're interested in, what how you want to apply your art skills, and he starts helping you hone your skills um, and forming your portfolio, forming your resume in a way that helps you to better advertise yourself as you start looking for internships and job opportunities through our career services office. Um, so that's a really great opportunity and something that um, our small size and small program is able to offer students. Um, for transfer students, we definitely recommend taking the time to meet one-on-one -on -one with an admissions counselor so we can go over your individual situation. 
There is an, a page of our site that talks about uh, how to apply for transfer applicants. And we do have an equivalency guide available on our website as well, specifically for Washington State Community Colleges. So um, we'd love to go over that with you um, and talk more about your situation and how it relates to our Bachelor of Fine Arts program, if that's something you're interested in. Finally, um, here's an overview of some upcoming events that we have. Our next big series is our deep dive series where we discuss each program in detail. And then we have some upcoming virtual workshops as well. So definitely join us online for those. And our contact information is here and will be available in the breakout room as well. So we would love to um, connect with you, learn more about your interests and hopefully um, get to evaluate uh, your experience. Thanks. Thank you, Katie. We're going to go on through the alphabet to Kansas City. Well, thank you so much for having me here today. My name is Julia Wellis, and my title is Senior Academic Affairs Specialist with the Kansas City Art Institute. Uh, basically, I work with transfer students, international students, and students entering in the spring. So Kansas City Art Institute is a private, nonprofit, undergraduate-only college. We were founded in 1885. And we're located in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, which is basically in kind of the middle of the country down a little bit in the south, um, kind of south part of the Midwest. Um, some things to, to know about Kansas City, um, our population is a, a really nice size. Um, it's kind of like a big little city, about 2 million. This is actually uh, last, uh, last year when we went to the Super Bowl and we're going to the Super Bowl again. So this is um, kind of, I think, a celebratory slide of, of how lovely Kansas City is uh, as far as the people, generosity, um, community. And um, we've been voted as one of the top places to live in the country. And I would say that the affordability of Kansas City is something that makes us very unique. Um, on average, our students are spending about three to $400 a month um, to rent a really nice two bedroom apartment within walking distance of our campus. Um, so that really sets us apart. Um, and it really makes, I think, um, the whole experience not only during KCA's time, but afterward, uh, um, uh, a much easier time when it comes to finances, for sure. Now, here's a shot of our campus. Um, we have about 16 acres of land. Um, we're located in a beautiful residential historic neighborhood in Kansas City. Um, we're about a 10 minute drive south of downtown. Um, we're within walking distance of two major shopping areas. Um, we only have about 650 students. Remember, we're undergraduate only. Um, so that means we have a lot of attention that we spend just for undergraduate students. Every single student gets their own dedicated studio. I don't know any other art school in the country that can say that that happens. <laughs> so this is something that really makes us unique. Um, now, we are located in between two major museums. On one side is the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. It's one of the top five historical museums in the country. They actually have over 30 paid internship positions just for our students. On the other side of our campus is the Kemper Contemporary Museum of Art. And we have a beautiful working relationship with them as well. But you can see through our campus that there are various buildings that are dedicated to a single department or maybe a very large building dedicated to several different majors. Um, Kansas City has also been ranked as one of the top five art cities in the country. And I think uh, a big thing about that is the affordability. Um, this is a place where working artists can support themselves um, in, in you know, the most creative of ways. There's a very warm, welcoming generosity to Kansas City, especially within the art scene. There are over 150 independent art galleries uh, just in the central art district called Crossroads, which again is about a 10 minute drive north of our campus. I mentioned housing earlier. Most of our transfer students live off campus, um, but we do have a brand new residence hall that we just opened up a year ago. Uh, it holds about 245 students and transfer students are more than welcome to live here if they choose. It's got a beautiful dining facility and a coffee shop. So basically everything that you need is right on our campus or within a very short walk. We also kept our old dormitory. Uh, and what we did was we renovated it and turned it into brand new studios for our two largest majors. We have 13 majors, I'll share with you in just a moment, but our two largest majors are illustration and animation. So now they're brand new studios for those students. Sorry, my presentation looks like it has frozen. There, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so within our 13 majors, um, we're very passionate about craft and tradition, and that's really something that makes our college unique, um, is, is its devotion to tradition and historical processes. All right, can you see me okay, Molly? Okay. This is my cue that the four minute timer has gone. Oh, okay. All righty, thank you. I'm just gonna zoom forward. Um, I was just gonna talk about studio spaces, technology. Um, these are our 13 majors, double majors and minors. Um, and then standard application materials, deadlines. Um, and we give every student typically about half tuition scholarships. And this is my contact info. I look forward to meeting with you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Julie. And I realize other schools have gone over their four minutes. And um, so I apologize if I've, I um, interrupted there. Um, I believe you're coming back to a North event next week. Is that correct? That is correct. And I've got, um, it's about a 35 minute presentation. I'll share all those slides, go into more detail about all of the departments and show a ton of student work. So I'd love for you all to attend if you can. Thank you. Terrific, thank you. All right, so going to PNCA. Hey, thanks for having me. My name's Rebecca. I work in the Pacific Northwest College of Arts Admissions Office. We are located in downtown Portland, Oregon, and we are also um, ACAD school, which stands for the Association of Independent Colleges in Art and Design. That means that we're private, we're nonprofit, and we're regionally and nationally accredited. We're also one in 39 leading art schools within the U.S. and Canada. We're also really excited about this planned merger that's taking place with Willamette University. They're located in Salem, Oregon. PNC is still going to stay in our location and keep our programs, but now we're going to be attached to this larger university, offering new resources and opportunities for students moving forward. And this is projected to close by June of this year. Our mission statement is that we empower artists and designers to reimagine what art and design can do in the world. And we do that by really building an interdisciplinary art practice. Um, if you attend PNCA, you would be receiving a bachelor's in fine art. So you would be spending about two thirds of your time in our studio art classes and one third of your time in liberal art classes. All of our liberal art classes are geared toward artists as designers. You have 11 majors to choose from and eight minors. But regardless of which one you choose, we have full access to all the facilities the whole time you're at PNCA. So you can totally be a printmaker using the video and sound lab, illustrator using the animated arts lab, so on and so forth. About 10 minutes away, we also have our sculpture facilities. It's about a 35,000 square foot warehouse that has everything from fiber arts to metal, um, woodworking and ceramics. We also have a really incredible international studies program and we have specific funding for students who want to take on this opportunity. I will say I went to North Seattle College, I transferred into PNCA and I also took advantage of this program. So if you do want to join us in those breakout rooms after, I'd be really happy to not only share from an admissions counselor perspective, but through my lived experience. We also have Bridge Lab Career Services on campus and they're going to help you with everything to prepare you for life after PNCA. So while you're there, you'll meet with them to build your resume, your CV, your cover letter. Um, they'll bring people in to talk about professional practices that you're going to wanna to know about after graduating. And they're also going to set you up with your internships. Most of our internships are either paid and or for credit. Um, Portland is a really huge art and design hub. We're also one of the two main art hubs in the world for stop motion animation. And we have strong relationships with all the industries in the area. Our application is free. We don't charge students to put in that hard work and see what might be offered to them before moving forward. The bulk of what we'll be looking at is your visual portfolio. We ask for 10 to 15 images of your strongest work. And that's really where I come in. I work with students in Washington State. I do one-on-one -on -one portfolio reviews constantly. I love talking about artwork and helping students curate the strongest application they can. So definitely reach out to me if you're interested in applying. We'll also ask you to write an artist statement. It is optional, but very much so recommended. Um, and I know that North Seattle has a really awesome art business class and that artist statement that you write in that class, um, it really acts as a launching pad into this portion. Um, and then last but not least, we ask for your unofficial transcripts. We are a test flying school, so we don't require your SAT or ACT scores. 
Every student who's admitted to PNC receives a merit-based scholarship up to $20,000 per academic year. We also have early application scholarships, jury scholarships, equity scholarships, and grant assistance. A lot of our scholarships do require that you filled out your FAFSA or your FAFSA equivalent. So we definitely recommend that every student do this regardless of your financial aid background. If you are an international student, we use the CSS profile. If you're an undocumented student, we use the Big Future EFC calculator tool, and that will make you eligible for all of that funding um, that we have where you need a FAFSA. So that is my presentation. Here are some Instagram links that you can follow if you'd like to see student work or deadlines coming up. Um, you can contact us at the admissions at pnca.edu email, but otherwise, please come visit me and I'd love to talk more about PNCA. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, next up is University of Washington School of Art. Um, hi, so my name is Katie Tuis. Um, I'm the program coordinator in the School of Art, Art, History and Design at the University of Washington. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, so we are part of the larger University of Washington. Um, we are, it's an amazing opportunity to study art or history and design within the scope of this large Research One University. Um, we um, have a great interdisciplinary um, dynamic with the rest of the campus. Um, and then, yeah, um, just talking a little bit about the degrees that we offer. We offer a Bachelor of Arts in Art and Art History, um, a Bachelor of Design for our undergraduate options. Uh, and then we also offer a graduate program for fine art design and art history, as well as a, um, a PhD option for art history as well. Um, just to give a brief overview of each of our three divisions, um, in the Division of Art, like I said, we offer the BA option. We also offer an opportunity to pursue honors, which is sort of a additional program for students who are interested in really deep diving into their studio studies. Um, when you declare the art major at UW, you um, choose from four different, we call them concentrations. They're essentially tracks of classes that allow you to really um, explore the mediums that you're interested in. Uh, those four concentrations are 3D 4M, which is ceramics, metal, and glass sculpture, uh, painting and drawing, so traditional oil painting and drawing techniques, photo media, which does encompass traditional film and photo-based media, and then also expands into um, a larger scope in terms of installation and more time-based um, performance media. And then interdisciplinary visual arts, um, often abbreviated IVA, which is kind of just like it says, um, it's an interdisciplinary approach to art making. It encompasses the other three concentrations. And then we also offer classes that are dedicated specifically to an interdisciplinary approach to art making as well. Um, our studio classes are really hands-on. You're gonna be in there making work with your peers. Um, emphasis on critique. So you'll be talking about your work as well as um, your classmates work. Um, class sizes are usually small, usually between eight to 12 students, especially when you get into your upper division courses. So you really get to know your peers and your faculty on a first name basis. Um, all of our faculty are practicing artists. They're involved in the Seattle arts community and arts scene. So they have a wealth of knowledge to share um, and they're an amazing resource. Um, to declare art when you, you'll first apply to the UW as a whole. Um, so we're not, uh, you don't have to apply directly to the art major. Um, you'll meet with our advising team during your transfer advising and orientation session, and then we can declare you from there. If you're coming in with studio art credits, we can usually use about 15 of those to go towards your degree requirements and then the remaining you'll complete when you are here at UW. Um, and if you come in with anything that hits those prerequisites, we can help you um, get placed into higher level classes if the faculty think that that's where you'll fit in. Um, moving on to design, uh, we offer a Bachelor of Design in Industrial Design, Interaction Design, and Visual Communication Design. Um, industrial Design is addressing the physical form um, and how design thinking can help that. Um, interaction design is going to be um, thinking about the relationship between people and interactive systems and then visual communication design is really talking about how design can meet the communication needs of industry and society. Um, there's some overlap between those as well, so we'll definitely be collaborating between um, cohorts. 
uh, similar to art, design is really hands-on. You're gonna be in the studio, you're gonna be working with your classmates. Um, it's reflective of um, how design works in the real world as well. Um, really quickly about that, our design program is capacity constrained. So there is an additional application process and I'd be happy to talk more about that um, in the breakout room as well. Um, art history, we offer a major as well as a minor option. Um, it's also part of the art and design curriculum. So you'll be taking art history classes um, if you declare either of those majors as well. Lots of great traditional ways to interact with art history and then also amazing hands-on experiences. I'll just kind of breeze through. Um, we have a lot of great uh, physical spaces on campus that we're excited to share once we can get back in the building. Um, opportunities to look at art, talk about art, show art. Um, as well as internship opportunities associated with those galleries as well. Um, and then really quickly, just scholarship opportunities. All of our incoming transfer students are eligible to apply for um, two $5,000 scholarships. Um, more information is on our website and I'd be happy to share that as well in the breakout room, but super easy to apply to. It's just a simple form. So everyone should keep that in mind. Um, and then here's our email. I'll be happy to stay in touch and I'm excited to answer more questions in the breakout room. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Okay, so Carmen um, with Washington State, it's your turn. So hi everyone, I'm going to try and go a little faster so we can go into the breakout room sooner. Um, I'm just, this is just an overview. Washington State University is a system. Um, we have five campuses across the state, as you can see on the map, uh, six total with our global online campus, obviously being online. Um, but today I'm going to be going over solely on Pullman specifically. If you are interested in the other campuses, such as Bocan, Tri-Cities, Vancouver, or Everett, please feel free to go to their websites to learn more. Um, they also will have their own admissions counselor, so they are happy to answer any questions that you have specifically about their campus. But again, today I will be only going over Pullman. Uh, so Pullman is on the east side of the state, um, about four and a half hour to five hour drive, a one hour flight. Um, we are in a true, uh, true college town, uh, Pullman, Washington. The little bit more about Pullman itself, um, it's a town of only 30, 34,000 people. Um, our undergraduate student body makes up um, just over 18,000 of that. So uh, pretty much all Pullman, all, all WC students make up about two thirds of the um the population itself. The average age of a, of a resident in Pullman is 22. So although it is a small little town, it is very young, fun, fun and vibrant. Um, to get involved on campus, um, we do, most of our students do live in Pullman considering it is a four and a half hour drive away from Seattle. So you are expected to move. Um, if you, um, we typically only require our freshmen to live on campus, but we do have uh, three residence halls specifically for upperclassmen for those students who do still want to live on campus, but not necessarily do so with freshmen as um, um, hallmates. Um, and then on campus, there's plenty to do. There is opportunities for athletic involvement. Um, we have over 400 student clubs, um, over 60 fraternities and sororities. Of those clubs, over 60 are culturally based. If you were ever an athlete or want to pick up sports, we have over inter, um, 75 intramural clubs and teams. And then if giving back is important to you, we also have the Center for Civic Engagement where you can learn about opportunities to give back to the, um, the community of Pullman, also the Palouse and even up to Spokane. So at WSU, we are a tier one research institution um, and we have over 200 fields of, of study. Um, specifically within the arts realm, we have um, the, uh, the majors of apparel, merchandise, design and textiles. We have architecture studies. We have digital technology and culture. We have fine arts with specializations in ceramics, digital media, uh, sculpture, printmaking, photography, um, painting, and so forth. Uh, my background is actually the new museum that we just have. I want to say they they said that it's the only red wall in the world. It's the only red mirrored wall in the world. So that's pretty cool. And it's right in the center of the campus. Um, and then um, we also have interior design and landscape architecture. 
we are a tier one research institution so that um, you will also be able to participate in research within arts if that's something that you're interested in. And then when it's safe to do so, hopefully post pandemic, you will be able to study abroad um, at with WSU on all seven continents um, with over 500 uh, programs to choose from. And then for transfer students specifically, um, when you are transferring, um, if you have a 3.2 GPA or higher, um, you will automatically qualify for a $2,000 uh, Crimson Transfer Award. And then if you are an out-of-state student, um, not originally from Seattle and you're still here um, just taking classes, then you will automatically also um, be eligible for the eleven thousand uh, dollar scholarship for um, if you have a three point zero and you are considered an out of state student. And then top three things to do now is to just apply. Um, our deadline it is a soft deadline. Um, it's January thirty first. We will be accepting applications after January thirty one. It'll just be a sooner um, response time. Um, apply for financial aid if you haven't done so already, and then um, apply to scholarships at w at scholarships at wsu.edu. And then um, we also have presentations from current colleges and uh, programs. So if you want to learn more specifically about your college or program that you're interested in, you can go to visit.wsu.edu. And then if you want to learn more, um, you can definitely jot that information down or scan and then that way we'll send you information. Thank you, Carmen. Um, and last but not least, Western. Okay, dope. Can y'all see my screen right now? Hopefully, yes. Um, hopefully you can also see my face because I'm really pretty. Um, but my name is Freddie. So I am the Senior Admissions Counselor for Western Washington University. I'm also the Multicultural Outreach Coordinator. And yeah, I'm just excited to be here. I appreciate y'all for letting us come through. Um, I'm sure a lot of y'all are pretty familiar with Western, but I do want to go over a couple of things. And just most importantly, let y'all know that we're happy to help if you need anything from us. Um, but a little bit about Western, we're up in Bellingham. So I'm sure a ton of y'all have already been up here <laughs> before, um, but super dope town. We're about 83,000. Um, our campus population is like 16,000 about. So it kind of puts things around 100,000 in the town when it's actually cracking and coronavirus isn't ruining everything. Um, so we're kind of in that medium type of city, a real city, but not like too huge, not stuck in traffic, but still stuff to do. Um, and also you can see from my picture, it's really beautiful up here. So we're close kind of to Seattle. We're a little bit closer to Vancouver, BC, but um, most importantly, we're right on the water. So that's a picture of Bellingham Bay we're looking at right now. And then we're super close to like Mount Baker um, and just a lot of really gorgeous outdoor stuff too. So I know a lot of my art students are into that. Um, I kind of edited this one down to just talk about some of the programs we have at Western in the College of Fine and Performing Arts. So we definitely have our history, we have dance, we have theater, design, um, and then we have our studio, obviously, which has a lot of different kind of sub things that you can focus upon. Um, so I listed out some of the most popular ones here. Those are gonna be ceramics, mixed media, um, kind of like I was saying, photography is super, super popular up here just because the area is super gorgeous. Um, but then we also have printmaking, drawing and painting, and a ton of others as well. Um, so. I would definitely say that we're pretty plugged in with the community as well. I know a couple of schools talked about doing different internships and whatnot around town. And the same is true definitely for us. Um, I know one of my friends did the game design program, which is considered the computer science slash design program. Um, but he did his internship with Microsoft and now he's working on like Xboxes and stuff, which is pretty dope. So we're pretty super plugged into the community and I would say just Bellingham in general, definitely gonna give you a little bit of a Portland vibe where we're definitely big on like the arts and the environmental stuff as well. So a lot of places around town to do your thing and also on campus. Um, I won't go crazy on this one because I know we don't have too much time, but there's a lot of stuff to do <laughs> outside of the classroom as well if you are interested. So 250 clubs, so anything from art or major related clubs to like Harry Potter club too. So pretty much anything you're looking for, we probably got. Um, and one that I did want to shout out on this specific presentation was just the Career Services Center. They were super helpful with regard to knowing stats about every single major and like what's the job placement rate for this major as opposed to that one or if the BFA is going to be more helpful to get you where you want to go as opposed to the BA. So definitely super helpful but then also a lot of fun things to do outside the classroom. Um, just as far as the admissions process, uh, I am one of the people who reads 
applications and essays and all that. So I'm definitely down to help you out however I can. Um, but basically, if you apply, the application is pretty easy. I'm just going to turn in your college transcripts as well. Um, if you have above a 3.0, you don't have to do the essay, but if you have below a 3.0, it is required. And then there's one thing called the Tell Us More essay if you just want to let us know about anything else going on um, that we might have questions about. Um, so as far as the deadlines, we have them listed out right here. And just one thing to keep in mind is you're going to be applying to your program as well. So most likely if you're going for art studio, it's going to be a portfolio process or the same is true for design. Um, quite a lot of scholarships. <laughs> so we have scholarships for different majors, but then we have just these scholarships as well that are just available to everyone, whether it's the Multicultural Achievement Program scholarship or scholarships based off the strength of your grades. We have a ton um, and you're automatically eligible for those just by applying to Western. And one thing that's kind of cool is we have one of the lowest tuitions in Washington for a four-year school. So definitely check these numbers out and that would be before any scholarships or financial aid cut in. So probably if that number's already pretty low, go way, way lower, hopefully. Um, and yeah, we got our contact info listed here. So definitely feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or we did update our um, the Google doc that you sent out too. So we do one-on-ones um, over Zoom with students as well. But yeah, thank you all so much. I appreciate y'all. Thank you, Freddie. And I am putting a link to that Google Doc in the chat now.